Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about the uh, booster doses for COVID-19. Um, the, there's been some confusion, uh, at least messaging confusion, uh, that has uh, happened. Uh, and I just want to talk about that and hopefully after uh, listening to what I have to say, uh, those who are a bit confused will be hopefully a little less confused. Um, what happened was um, we've been getting information uh, about uh, how quickly uh, the immunity to COVID-19 wanes uh, following vaccination, and this this data is coming in as we speak, and uh, the, the the first thing that went wrong, in my opinion, was that the White House anticipated what the FDA and CDC were going to do before they did it. Uh, they and 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 as a result of this. Uh, anticipate, uh, uh, anticipation of what's going to happen, they essentially uh, told the American people that at, at a certain date, like mid-September, that we would start rolling out uh, booster shots to the general public, uh, those that are currently eligible for um, um, the Pfizer, at least, uh, Pfizer submitted their uh, data for approval of a booster shot first, and so they they were considered first. Um, so they should never have done that. Uh, they they could have said what they expected, but they shouldn't have promised it. And yeah, they said, well, it's pending FDA approval, but the way they worded it led everyone to believe that they knew what was going to happen, what the FDA was going to say. And this is before the FDA had a chance to review the, the information in detail. So uh, on Friday, the FDA uh, met and they reviewed the data. And they came to a conclusion different than what was expected. They concluded, based on the current available data, that they would recommend uh, the uh, boosters for Pfizer uh, for people 65 and older and for um, people with high-risk medical conditions. Now that was a vote of 18 to zero to make that recommendation. They also voted to not recommend it for people under 65 who have no high risk medical conditions. Now they also made, uh, discussed that it was probably going to be a good idea to vaccinate uh, booster, good boosters to healthcare workers and frontline workers too, but they didn't vote on that. So that was a little up in the air, you know, what, so what does that mean? What do you do with that? Um, so anyway, that's, that's how that was, was left. And this was an FDA advisory committee. This wasn't the FDA. Now the FDA usually do, does what the FDA advisory committee recommends they do, uh, almost always. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we, they could recommend something different if they have reason to. And then following the FDA, uh, then CDC uh, weighs in and then makes uh, general guidelines, which uh, are, are what we generally follow in deciding who gets or doesn't get the vaccine when, etc. So, um, that's where we are with that. Uh, so it'll take about another week before the FDA um, actually uh, gives its blessing on the advisory committee's recommendation. 
and and then I'm not sure exactly how long, maybe a few days to a, a week for the CDC to weigh in. And uh, so that's where we are there. So today on the Sunday talk shows, uh, they asked Fauci about this and says, well, hey, you know, uh, did you make a mistake? And says, no, no, we didn't make a mistake, uh, you know, they asked, well, do you think the FDA came to the wrong conclusion that they should have, uh, advisory committee should have recommended it for everyone? And he correctly pointed out that, well, based on the data that we have, now remember, when we first started this, uh, it was the healthcare workers, the people with high-risk medical conditions, and the elderly who got the vaccine first. So we have more, much more data on those groups than we do for the general population. Uh, we, we have, uh, you know, the, the data isn't in yet for them. It will be in soon, but not yet. So it's not surprising when you consider that, that they don't have sufficient data to make a general recommendation for everyone yet. Now that may change in a couple of weeks, two to four weeks or so, that, that data may be available. And then I expect, unless something surprising is shown in the data, as long as it remains safe and effective, they're going to change the recommendations they just made, and they'll recommend the boosters for everybody. Um, remember, there were some cases of uh, myocarditis that occurred, especially in, in younger males um, uh, who got the COVID vaccine. It's still a very tiny uh, percentage, but but it's it's a concern, and it would be nice to get all the, the data in to 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 confirm that it's a tiny percentage and that it's still the the risk benefit ratio favors giving the vaccine before we we talk because if if they screw this thing up if it turns out that uh the thing isn't you know there's a problem there and we didn't wait before we made the recommendation nobody's going to uh say oh well you know that's okay fda we We'll let you slide this time. Nobody's going to let them slide. They, they've got to get it right. So, um, the, so yeah, I think I think that it will eventually be what the White House said. It's just that the White House had no business promising this at this time before. That all they had to say was, "We will plan. We will we will purchase the vaccine. We will plan." for giving the boosters to everyone uh, in the event that the FDA recommends and approves it for that purpose. And CDC uh, gives that as the guideline so that they're prepared, so that there's no delay. That's all they had to do. They didn't have to promise it would be done. They just had to say, we're going to prepare for that contingency. Uh, we'll work on the assumption it will be ready. And if it isn't ready just then, well, We've got it ready for when it is. That's if they had done that, there wouldn't be any confusion, there wouldn't be any uh, inconsistency, uh, and so they they left themselves open for that criticism unnecessarily. I think it was just uh, a poor strategy uh, in communication. Um, so I anticipate that in the next month or two we're going to get a whole lot more information in and a lot of these questions this fuzziness of uh of recommendations um will be crystallized and be very clear um even though it isn't perfectly clear right at the moment and definitely when it becomes your time uh to get your booster get it uh don't mess around with this disease. Uh, you know, this, this is, you know, it's Russian roulette. You, you don't want to take a chance with it. Uh, the vaccine risk is far, far, far lower than uh, the uh, disease risk. This is a nasty, or at least a potentially nasty bug, and you don't want it. Thanks for watching.